the court has not signed the order to transfer the deed and they haven't canceled my deed yet, is there something I can do to like stop them further, like another deed or something? Yes, yeah. Well, we, we haven't... <clears throat> when we talk about um, c- contest points at the sharp edge, the most powerful thing... Okay, they're using, they're using title against us when we go to court. The title they're using is that there is a title in a slave role and they're using that as being a trustee of the estate to call up that slave role and say, I, I hold the title. Yeah? Yes. So when we can test title by saying, I am trust recipient number, blah, 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 that actually legally is our strongest argument above all. Because once you can test a title, a title, can't, a title contestation can't simply be resolved by ignoring it. Yeah? It's, right. it's a, it's, it is the most, in terms of trust law, it is one of the most fundamental principles of, of argument. When you contest the title, you're basically saying no, either by first registration or by superior authority, the property is on a different register. Yeah? Oh, okay. Now, if the property is on a different register and you've claimed superior title then they can't use that title. Basically, their right to use that title is suspended until it's resolved. They can't use it. Right. Right? So if you want to stop them conveying title, which, by the way, they can do any time they like, yeah? And yep. they've done it. Yep. You, you want to get your title in there, granted by the societies, quick, smart, and, and make it a contest of title. Yeah? Right. Now, There's what a, people need to understand is a claim of right is not a contest of title. It isn't a contest of title. A title is a right of property granted by lawful succession um, and a existence of a register. So it's crucial to have those elements in place. Now, Ron, we can talk about your, your, your issue but there's a few technical things for us to be uh, whizzing forward. But certainly we could show a title in your case succeeding down from uh, one heaven to you as a contest, providing you can give a meets and bounds for your particular property. Yes, and I then can. what you would lodge is a contest of title. Right. Yeah? Right. Do you launch that in court or, you know, like a, quiet, like a quiet title action or something like that? I, I just lodge it as an administrative process. Once you give notice to contesting the title, they, they are forbidden. If they, if you, once you, now we made this mistake in a previous matter that we did not formally um, submit the administrative process as a specific contest of title. What we did was we, we issued it as a superior court. Now, of course, issuing as a superior court, if they don't recognise your court, if they don't recognise your jurisdiction, you've pretty much given them a way out, yeah? Right. Because then they pretend that they don't hear you, they don't receive you, they just lodge it as correspondence. But once you administratively lodge the documents as a, as a physical contest of title and it's done so that they can't ignore you and they can't treat it as correspondence, then uh, they've got a problem, Ron? Right. Ron? Yeah, do you... Um... Have you finished that those documents yet, or working on them? Uh, I'll, let's take it offline so we can get through the conversations. But uh, I okay. will call you and we'll go through it. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Thank you, Ron. Thanks, Frank. Bye. Thanks. Okay. <clears throat> Back to uh, uh, questions on the chat, real quick. Uh, we will go through these for the benefit of those that will be listening to the call later. These are some important and some, some good questions. Does DCC uh, and dot, 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 and or dot, 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 come before the signature? Always. VC and, and the ellipse always come before the signature. That's crucial. So that you are, you, you, must, you must demonstrate in the penmanship 
uh, that you have given your protest first before you sign. Okay? Could you, yeah, could you go a little bit further on the explanation uh, behind the dot, dot, dot? Yeah, well, look, um, let's take a practical example. Say one of you who are on the call or listening gets arrested, okay? And so you're taken down to the processing and really processing is contracting, as you all know. You're in there to be contracted into their system. And it's the first part of their validation that they have you under jurisdiction. So you walk in there, and then typically if you've learnt about contracting, some of you might have already done this before and, and said, uh, well, I will not consent. Well, immediately in their processing, because the sheriff's uh, deputies are trained, that anyone that looks sideways, blinks or whatever is a problem and they put you into isolation and that's why they're there to tase you and jump on you and all of that. They're just trained now to react that way. Instead of going down that, that road, processing now can be done very simply by going up, they say sign here, you go V dot C dot and then sign. You don't tell them what you're doing. None of these people are trained to, uh, to be the interpreters of protest. That will come later with the hearing. Now, if one of them is clued up, and by discussing this in public, by writing it in public, it could well happen that the, uh, the reflexive, trained, dumbed-down uh, people employed in these places get told that if someone puts V.C. It's, uh, it's an offence and bash them or hit them or whatever. In those cases, then you just go dot, dot, dot. And the dot, dot, dot means that uh, I would otherwise have written something else but because of the situation, I'm prevented. So I'm giving you two options. The preferable is to make it clear, V, full stop, C, full stop, V, coactus, under duress, and then your signature. So V, full stop, C, full stop. Or if, as, as is probably going to happen in a, in a week or month or whenever, that the, uh, these people uh, uh, sent the memo, which they always do, um, the ellipse. Now, no one can prevent you putting an ellipse, no one. Uh, I'd like to see that one tried. And, it, and if, if it comes down to that, well, we're probably down to the very end of their system anyway if they're saying you can't even put a full stop. I mean, that's getting ridiculous. But don't make a, a, a show. Don't tell them what you're doing. Just within your rights, just make sure your signature is shown to be under duress. And that's all you need. And when you go to the hearing, just make it known. Just make it known, okay? Great. Thank you, Frank, for that explanation. All right, just as a reminder for the callers on the phone lines, if you press star 8, and you'll be entered into the queue for uh, asking your question. Uh, next question I uh, see is about passports. Is there any news about passports? Okay. Um, uh, yeah, the passport is a travel warrant. Now, the issue of, of uh, travel warrants uh, and passports is that you want, or you need to have a system that is recognised at the port of departure and the port of arrival. Now, they control them and the network controls them and there's no point pushing the system and risking now that they have turned the ports into... Uh, very tightly controlled paramilitary installations. I, I do not suggest anyone pushing the envelope to try and prove a point. So there is no rush at this point about passports. What I would say about passports generally and licenses generally and any kind of uh, registration into their system generally, while you pursue remedy, which is your right, in a system predicated on being lawful because it's voluntary. And so long as they do not honour that part of the system, then under necessity, you have every right to keep using the tools that are afforded to you, knowing that you do so in order to travel, in order to do your job, in order to stay alive. I say to all of you that if you have a passport coming up for renewal, and uh, the travel warrant's not in place and you haven't had the CQVs collapsed and the system hasn't given you the documents back cancelled, then you have every right to still register 
for a passport and in no way are you contracting yourself back into the system so long as you make it clear that you're doing it by necessity. Now, a passport's a classic example to put a dot, dot, dot. I would not suggest a VC on it. A dot, dot, dot and a signature and, and no one can, can argue that you have consented back in. And even if they didn't permit the dot, 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 in no way could they argue that your passport process is a contracting of a benefit that brings you back under their jurisdiction. It's just simply that the system at the moment is not honouring the principles in which it was based and you've got to live, you've got to survive. But no one should be being crazy brave and saying, no, no, I'm going to test this new travel warrant. Let's see what happens. There's no benefit in, in, in being provocative to them. They should do their job, stay honourable, and at this point I would simply say continue to use those services which you're forced to use, like a passport, okay? Okay, just to expand a little bit on that, there's a question here uh, um, expanding on that uh, regarding passports. So using my current passport won't contract me back into the system even if they do collapse my CQBs? Okay, what do you think the okay? What do you think an EDP? And I'll Terry, I'll bounce back to you. So, what do you think an EDP does in their system? Is it not a claim of right? Yes, it is a claim of right. And okay, and 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 given it's a claim of right that that says that this is the way by which you need to be recognised as a trust recipient. If they do not recognise that then they, they certainly can't claim that you have uh, withdrawn your um, claim of right if you follow up with a dishonour, even if you have to contract a new passport. How can they? They can't, can they? No. However, even if you are using an existing passport that you would have, um, should not affect that as well, correct? You should not. Sorry, I missed that bit. You should not. Uh, in other words, you should still be able to use uh, that passport without a presumption if you've done gone through the EDP process. Oh, absolutely. Once, right. once someone that's right. Once someone stands up on the EDP process, that's it. Now thereafter, if for them, all they have to do, your passport could look exactly the same as it is, but instead of it having the uh, SSN Roman slave, it would be your trust number. Now, we're not even asking them to have a different coloured passport. We're just simply saying, this is who we are. This is our trust. You don't own us, but uh, please, you know, update your system. Now, they're not doing any of that, Terry. So no one, let me repeat, no one should regard any registration in their system as a recontracting and a deficiency of their EDP process. On the contrary by showing uh, that you remain in honour and drive with a licence and have a passport, you are being non-controversial and they are the ones in dishonour. Okay? Okay, thank you for that, Frank. Uh, regarding trust recipient, isn't the recipient just a beneficiary? So, sorry, could you repeat that for us? Regarding the trust recipient? Yes. Isn't the recipient just a beneficiary? Uh, the trust recipient is actually the um, is the beneficiary. That's correct. But it's said because it's the the trust recipient is the body corporate. So it's the it's the corporation of the trust. So it's said as trust recipient rather than beneficiary, because there's some trickery in their system, and I don't want to. Um, I, I, we're not going to have the time tonight to sort of get into it but the way to think of it is in their system the beneficiary or the one that holds equitable title as a tenant has no right whatsoever in fact there are a number of case statutes in their system where a beneficiary is not even recognised as existing within the court the only court where a beneficiary is ever re recognised as existing is the Court of Chancery or the Court of Equity. But in a normal court, if you go in there and say, I'm the beneficiary, the judge will say, I can't hear you. 
And what they're saying is you, you, you have no standing as 